Within Mortal Kombat, it would seem to be the case that the most popular of the characters are those who were featured in the first three games. Those three represent the franchise in its first heyday, its first period of prominence when it gained notoriety for its blood and brutality and everything else that made Mortal Kombat, well, Mortal Kombat. But sometimes there are characters who are able to break through and command a following despite not being a part of that group. We can see this in Kenshi, whom we will further discuss in our video on the full story of Kenshi. Kenshi is a blind swordsman who uses his training and attunement with his sword Sento to guide him and, of course, to fight. Prior to acquiring Sento, Kenshi was already a talented fighter to the point of excessive pride. One day, a man named Song talked to him and instructed him to retrieve Sento. Kenshi assents, but when he finally does retrieve the sword, a great mass of souls are released, and the burst of power that resulted from Kenshi awakening Sento also permanently blinded him. It would turn out that Song was actually the evil sorcerer Shang Tsung, who would use the released souls and capture them as power for his own use. While Shang Tsung would leave Kenshi to die, Sinto would assist Kenshi in escaping the dark tomb in which it was found. Sinto itself is a weapon handed down by a lineage of Kenshi's own ancestors, who themselves were phenomenal warriors, and the souls released by Kenshi retrieving Sinto were the souls of his ancestors. After Kenshi escaped with Sinto, he would spend his time retraining his senses to their full potential. Before continuing, it is worth noting that there are two continuities in Mortal Kombat mythology, the Midway Continuity and the Netherrealm Continuity. The Midway Continuity is comprised of titles developed by Midway Games, the original developers of the Mortal Kombat series, now defunct. The Netherrealm Continuity is comprised of the games developed by Netherrealm Studios, the current developer of the Mortal Kombat titles. Kenshi's backstory, as explained before, is essentially consistent between both continuities. To start with the Midway continuity, it would turn out that Jax Briggs and Sonya Blade of the US Special Forces would catch wind of Kenshi sometime after he began training with Sinto and learning to live and fight with his newly heightened senses. Around this time, Jax and Sonya were going to form the Outworld Investigation Agency, meant to defend Earthrealm from threats from other realms such as Outworld and Netherrealm, and they needed capable fighters. Shang Tsung is one such consistent threat against Earthrealm, and seeking revenge, Kenshi jumps at the opportunity. Kenshi makes his debut as a character in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, the fifth game in the series. His first assignment with the agency was to find fellow operative Cyrax, who was lost in Outworld. During his mission, he encounters Ermac, a being comprised of many souls, and the former lieutenant of Shao Kahn, a main villain in the franchise. Kenshi took pity on Ermac and broke the mind control that Shao Kahn had over him, freeing Ermac and giving him independence of his mind. In gratitude, Ermac taught Kenshi one of his combat techniques, and would himself go on to fight for justice. As Kenshi progressed further in his mission and began to learn more about the machinations of Shang Tsung and another evil sorcerer named Quan Chi, a man named Mavado, leader of an organization called Red Dragon, appeared and beat Kenshi to near death. Shang Tsung, knowing that Kenshi was pursuing him, instructed Mavado to kill Kenshi, but Mavado was unaware that though he defeated Kenshi, the swordsman was still alive. That was Kenshi's fortune leading up to the sixth game, Mortal Kombat Deception. Badly wounded and stranded in Outworld, Kenshi was eventually found by Sub-Zero, a warrior aligned with the Earthrealm heroes. Sub-Zero worked to help Kenshi recover back to full strength, and Kenshi would ally with him so that both could find their way back to Earthrealm. During this time, the souls of Kenshi's ancestors stolen by Shang Tsung would return to Sinto, as Shang Tsung died by the recently awoken Onaga, the main villain of Deception. Unable to exact his revenge, Kenshi would both resign from his position at Outworld Investigation Agency and part ways with Sub-Zero, though he was still an ally to both. This leads up to the last game in the continuity, Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Kenshi became a lone warrior and vigilante for justice. In his new life as a vigilante, he would eventually intercept a message for Mavado, who previously nearly killed him, and learn about plans to kill Taven. Later, Kenshi would be contacted by Johnny Cage, another Earthrealm hero, about gathering many heroes together to prepare against a mass alliance of villains. Kenshi at first refuses, uninterested in this fight between good and evil, and somewhat disinterested with the moral demarcations. He's more interested in pursuing his own missions as he chooses. 
However, he would later receive a psychic vision of Taven and Dagon in their mission to kill Blaze, whose defeat would spell the acquisition of great power, dangerous in the wrong hands. He would eventually request to side with the Forces of Light, the group of heroes that Johnny Cage was recruiting, and would lead them in the fight against the Forces of Darkness, called the Battle of Armageddon. However, the Forces of Light were wiped out by the end of Armageddon. As this is a bad outcome for the heroes in Earthrealm, Raiden, another member of the Forces of Light, would send the information that he gathered from his experiences in this continuity to a past self, so that he and the heroes can make decisions that will guarantee the preservation of Earthrealm. This founds the Netherrealm continuity, which uses the first Mortal Kombat game as its chronological starting point, but details a new version of events from there on. Kenshi does not appear in Mortal Kombat 2011, the first game in the continuity as a playable character, but returns as a playable character in the next game, Mortal Kombat 10. By the time of his debut in the Netherrealm continuity, Kenshi is already unambiguously aligned with the heroes, most often seen with the special forces including Jax, Sonya, and Johnny Cage. In this continuity, Kenshi has a son named Takeda Takahashi, who is also a playable character in Mortal Kombat 10. Takeda, however, would come to be a Shirai Ryu student, though only active later in the story mode. In the beginning of the story, Kenshi assists Johnny Cage in fighting off a surprise attack from the revenant forms of Scorpion and Sub-Zero as Johnny Cage, the Special Forces, and the other heroes are on their way to the Sky Temple to protect it from Shinnok, who would corrupt the life force found in the Sky Temple's innermost chamber. Kenshi fights alongside the Special Forces as they make their way through the Sky Temple and into the innermost chamber, where Earthrealm's life force is concentrated. Here they meet Raiden and Fujin, as they are trying to stop Shinnok from reaching the chamber. Eventually, it would be Johnny Cage who defeats Shinnok, and Raiden would seal Shinnok away in an amulet after this fight. Much of the rest of Mortal Kombat 10's story takes place 25 years after Shinnok's defeat, as just described. Kenshi is still with the Special Forces and fighting to protect Earthrealm. His son, Takeda, would be selected to be a part of a Special Forces team along with Cassie Cage, Jackie Briggs, and Kung Jin. Takeda has his own story mode chapter, while Kenshi does not. And in a flashback 20 years after the defeat of Shinnok by Johnny Cage, Kenshi meets with Takeda, who has become a Shirai Ryu disciple training with a revived and reformed Scorpion who leads the Shirai Ryu martial arts clan. Scorpion now prefers to go by his full name, Hanzo Hasashi, in acknowledgement of his slain family. Takeda is angry with Kenshi for never visiting him since becoming a Shirai Ryu student, and not telling him the story of what happened to his mother Suchin, who was a target of the Red Dragon group. As Kenshi discloses the story of Suchin's death, Kenshi explains that he did not want Takeda to seek revenge while being unprepared to fight, as the Red Dragon targeted Takeda as well in the past. After Kenshi and Takeda fight, Kenshi acknowledges Takeda's skill and suggests that the two hunt down Red Dragon together. This plan to hunt down Red Dragon together would not come to pass. Back in the present, throughout the rest of the story, Kenshi assists the heroes in fighting against efforts to revive Shinnok. He is present during a mission that featured Jax's return to the field, a mission which would result in the capture of Quan Chi. Quan Chi is a target of Scorpion, as the sorcerer misled him about the truth of the slaying of his family and made Scorpion kill an innocent man. The special forces and the rest of the heroes plan to detain Quan Chi so that his power can be controlled so as to revive other heroes, a mysterious and accidental result that was only successful once and saw the revival of Jax, Scorpion, and Sub-Zero after they were killed and became revenants. But Scorpion is consumed with a need for revenge and overruns the special forces base with an army of Shirai Ryu disciples where Quan Chi is being held. Kenshi tries to stop Scorpion, who spent much time training his son Takeda, but the Shirai Ryu overtake him, and Kenshi and the other Special Forces members are captured. They can do nothing as Scorpion kills Quan Chi, but a surprise appearance from Quan Chi's associate, Devora leads to the revival of Shinnok. Right before Quan Chi is killed by Scorpion, Devora tosses the amulet in which Shinnok is trapped to Quan Chi, who utters a spell to free Shinnok. This closes Kenshi's involvement in Mortal Kombat 10. Kenshi also does appear in the Mortal Kombat 10 comic series, which precedes the story told in the Mortal Kombat 10 game. One important story in the comic is of how Takeda comes to be left with and raised by Scorpion. 
After Scorpion has been revived after previously being a revenant, Kinshi helps Scorpion overcome his inner personal struggles with vengeance. Scorpion has something of an alter ego that he assumes when he is too consumed by bloodlust and anger. The comic starts its story on Kinshi with him joining the special forces and being assigned to hunt down Red Dragon. Sonya notified Kinshi that the Red Dragon are targeting Suchin and Takeda, and Kinshi rushes to protect them, but by the time Kinshi arrives to their home in Thailand, Suchin is dead. Suchin's mother helps Kinshi find Takeda, and Kinshi escapes with his son, who is still a boy by now. Kinshi travels to the Shirai Ryu headquarters in Japan, hoping for sanctuary and temporary defense against the Red Dragon pursuers. He speaks with Scorpion here, who heads the Shirai Ryu now, and during this conversation, he chooses to leave Takeda with Scorpion. Kinshi is alive and well, and a member of the heroes by the end of Mortal Kombat 10. He's free from any sort of cynicism or inner moral conflict that any of the other heroes may be dealing with. He is stuck by the special forces since joining them. His relationship with his son could use some repair, and the Red Dragon group is still active, so they could take them on together. Mortal Kombat 11 deals prominently with the themes of past selves of characters encountering their current selves. Kinshi's mind and commitments have remained the same throughout the Netherrealm continuity, and the backstory of his decision to leave Takeda with Scorpion has been fleshed out. There's not much mystery left to the character, but he is still an important character in the fight against evil. The lack of any real drama and the relative unpopularity of Takeda would seem to blunt chances for major story involvement for Kinshi in Mortal Kombat 11, but expect him to be a consistent hero nonetheless. And that concludes our video on the full story of Kinshi. Kinshi is a man who initially is guided by selfish notions of vanity, but his character growth and depth arises from learning to understand the world as something that is greater than his own motivations, particularly shown in his decision to lead the forces of light in the Midway continuity and in deciding to leave Takeda with Scorpion. Your mileage may vary on Kinshi's reasoning and handling of leaving Scorpion to raise Takeda, though. What do you think of Kinshi's decision and of the character himself? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.